Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, Lili Nishmas Imi Merosi Rusmas Mordechai. Welcome to all the guests. Rabbi Gabai. Chaskel Gabai from LA. Shalom Aleichem. Who else? Shalom Aleichem. What's your name? Vantoch. Valto. From Zurich. Ah, you know, Stefanskis are a little bit from. As Jonathan. Shkoya. What, does people in Switzerland do the daf? More than one? I think, yeah. Okay. Who else do we have? I saw a guy there. You guys are hiding out. What's your names over there? Schwartz? Berg. Schwartz, Schwartz from? Potter Park. All right, everybody. So if you look at the screen, you'll see our in house pilot, Michal Harbiter. He even has his wings on. Hold on, Dr. Epstein. What's going on here? Like that, you're not behaving. Okay. Mamish. I, but I wanted to ask you, how many flights did you do for Chesed when you were in America? You know? 13 or 14 Chesed flights? Wow, your own plane, your own flight? Wow. Kol HaKavod. I used to, I don't know if I told Dailam, I used to own a little plane, small plane. I, my properties used to be in Indianapolis. Now they also. No, 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 but this part. So I made an unbelievable cheshman. It takes three hours to drive from Chicago to Indianapolis. If I buy a plane, I could cut it down to 40 minutes. So I bought the plane, became a pilot, the whole thing. So then, but you have to drive to the airport. That takes 30 minutes, you have to park the car. They have to do the walk around, you have to, you have to do the whole pre-flight, the whole thing. It's another half hour, then, you have, then the gap. Then you fly there, and then you, you don't have a car. So you have to wait for the guy to come pick you up. Sometimes they give you a car, they rent, they give you a car for free. Kids are, instead of three hours, it's four and a half hours, but you could say that you flew to Indianapolis. Yeah, gishmak, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mati, shalom aleichem. Uh, this this is going around, but I gotta say this is right after uh, Yom Kippur. The Ger Rebbe was once asked by a chassid, "There are so many things in the Mavzer we don't say. Why don't we just print a new Mavzer that only includes what we say?" He responded, "And take away the simcha Yid has when he gets to skip a page of davening." <laughs> and this is our one and only forking. Here, a lot of volume here. You got some volume, good. He's waking up all the kids for chakras, so all done. About to wake up all the kids in the dearest for chakras now. It's been a long day. MDY cap. I was thinking, if you want those kids to never do dafyami, that's how you wake them up. And here's a stick, a bumper, a magnet, Vekos, Harnov, and also the eight minute daf. But boys, because last night we didn't say any names, so we're going to say today we're going to have to do a double. Why is Delinsky in here twice again? So no, I know, but didn't we say his name? Do I, did I not say your name? The first day, but not official. Okay, David Dayan, eighteen Canadian dollars. Aaron Meislik, if you're Canadian and you give Canadian dollars or Israeli in shekel, you come to the beginning of the list. It's just a, a little trick. David Ayans, $18. Aaron Meislik, $36 US dollars. Ovaid Batat, $52. Sheldon Reich, $18. Jeffrey Slatis, $36. Roland Friedman, $36. Ariel Nishli, $18. Jochen and Adler, $18. Lenny Glazer, $18. Mayor Gestetner, $18. You see, we got rid of that 10. Shma. Gil Abramov, 101. Harold Schoenfeld, $36. Marvin Handler, $18. Aaron Koch, $18. Shmuel Sugar, 300. It's a real 300? Okay. Yes, no, because sometimes it comes in as it's a one-time thing. It's split over the year. 300. That's, what, that's, top, that's the top guy so far. Shmuel Sugar. Or one of the top. Jeffrey Rosenberg, 18. Evan Collar. Oh, that's, that's who we had yesterday. He wants to be the Vasarebbe. Evan Collar, 18. The Vasarebbe. Yisrael. Schweit, I don't know if this is S W I A T Y. You know how to pronounce these wow. names. 
Yisrael Shlafrak. S W I A T Y C K I. Eighteen. Nathan Goldring, eighteen. Richard Dweck, fifty-two. Yaakov Shama, eighteen. Oh, this is one of my favorite. Simon Leibowitz, one dollar. Great. I am no Bemis. Great. You can do one dollar. You can do whatever you want. It's Givaldi. It's better than nothing. No, it's to be part of the Chevra. Shmuel Sugar, 101. Pesach Kahana, 36. Fagin Medetsky, 36. Joseph Berry, 10. Moshe S. Weiss, 10. Eliel Delinsky, one dollar. No, it says 15, but I know he wants to go down to one, so I'm putting one for him. Nah. It says Eliel Delinsky twice. Unbelievable. I don't know why. Ian Aaron, 120. Mark. Falkenstein, 52, I'm going backwards. Mendel Lerner, 180. Mendel Lerner is the owner of the Rally Hotel. And he invited the Olam. He says, there's nothing like a Shabbos with a bunch of Hasidim. That's what he said. But I have to read his email. Where's his email? I don't know. Mark Ashkenazi, we said already, 180. Ari Blau, 18. Ari Blau, Yishkoyach Ari. Alex Gilden, 10. Shlomo Baum, Bauman, 36. Katriel Silva, 10. Warren Kimmel, 36. And Joseph Koth, 10. Ad Khan, Hakofa Aleph. Huh? Money or people? We can't discuss it. It's thousands. It's No, it's a lot of money. Baruch Hashem, it's adding up. It's a drop in the bucket to what we're spending. We're spending a million dollars. We're not going to get there. Maybe one day. One day. It's a lot. Baruch Hashem. It adds up. Sponsors. The Koilel non Somebody needs to step up to the plate. I know it's been his mind, but they still get paid. Mesechta. Life, don't worry, you'll get paid. Even if nobody sponsors. Mesechta. Jeff Razin. Chos my son. Yesu. Sechul chayim. Ben. Tzor. Chan. Refor. Shleima. Refor. Shleima. Amen. The rest of the Mesechta. Official Mitzvah motivators. Avram Menashe. Ben. Chana. Brocha. Refor. Shleima. Sponsor of the month. Lili Nishma. Zechari. Ben. Moshe. Last day of Paris HaChodesh, Rufu Shleimo, Yecheskel Ben Leo, Rufu Shleimo, Main. And the third Paris HaChodesh has a schus, that Hashem should watch over me and ensure that I'm completely healthy at Mev Esrim on Main. Paris HaYoyim, Alan Reese, Rufu Shleimo, Filana Chana, Bad Gila, Bray, Reinlo, Reino, Reinlo, Rufu Shleimo for Pinchas Leo Ben Rachel. And listen to this one. By Mordechai Aronoff, in honor of my dear beloved brother-in-law, Yecheskel Gabe, who is here today. Yishka, hi. You know who he's sponsoring? I did this to him when he came. So uh, came the got it. You can do it when nobody comes, also. Okay. I uh, just, yesterday was Mamish Bezionis. I had a whole new shot in the sugya. And I did this whole chart, and then I had to change it in the middle of Shear. It turns out that what I changed it to is the exact chart that we had the day before. That we didn't know Pshat. Here it is the day before in the Tzadik Gimel. It was the 1500. <coughs> I had to change the, 100, the 175 to 100 kids or whatever. But the Pshat, we got Pshat yesterday. Okay, Lama Shana. Rabbi Yisai, we're holding my brand new Mishnah. Sponsored by Moshe Cohen, Lashos, for Limit Torah, and continue at Slacha in Parnassa. And I think that's his last Mishnah. Okay. So today we're going in circles. As you see this chart right over here, that's uh, the theme of today's daf. We have a bunch of circles. Says the Mishnah. Person who's married to two women. Umochar, huh? That's, yeah. Umochar, so deyu. And he took the field that was designated for the Ksubas, right? Every field that he owns is actually Meshubad, has a lien on it for the wife's Ksubas, but he sold it. Because of Rishoyin Alelikeach, Dinu Dvarim Eli Imach, says the wife to the buyer, don't worry about it, I'm not going to sue you. Hashnia Moitzia Malikeach. Now the husband dies and they want a Ksuba. So the second wife goes and she's able to remove the field, the real estate from the buyer, the purchaser. Very sh- so it goes like this. I just moved it. Here we go. This guy 
buys the field, buys the house. Woman number one, she was married first. She says, I'm never going to come sue you. She tells the dentist from the five towns. But the second woman, the second wife, number two, she's number two over here, the Yushami lady, she never said anything. So she has the right, since that house was already obligated to her during the marriage, she has the right to take it away from the dentist. She goes and she takes it away from the dentist. No. The first wife said to the dentist, I have nothing to do with you. I'm not going to sue you. She never said anything to the second wife. And she never gave up her lien to the house. And she's first in line. She was married to the guy before the Yerushalmi. She's won. So she goes ahead and she grabs the real estate from one. Now, he goes and takes it away from her because... She said, and it goes in a big circle, over and over and over. Okay? So it just keeps on going in a circle. Then the second one comes and grabs it from the, from the dentist. The first one grabs it from the second one. The dentist grabs it from the first one, and it goes in a circle. And it just goes around. Until they come up with some sort of compromise. I have to say this because Avi is here and I, I missed him. So there was, whatever, there was, there was a lawyer, there's a lawyer who was very, very proud of his son who graduated law school and he's finally making it into the firm. So he comes to the firm and he wants to impress his father. So after like a week, he says, Dad, you see, you've been working on this for, for 20 years. I figured out a solution. I made a pshara. I resolved it. All the parties, everybody's happy. It's all good. Father says, what an idiot. We're making parnas on this for 20 years and you come and you ruin it for us. So, pshara, it's not that funny, Tzadik. It's all I have today. <laughs> yeah. So, they made a pshara. They have to make a pshara. As long as one wife makes a pshara with the other wife, then he's out of the picture, or if she, any two that make the pshara, then the third one is out of the picture. But they could all, all three of them can make a pshara. V'chein bal chayv, v'chein isha bal chayv, hopefully we get there today. It's, we have to get there, because it's the last lines basically before the new parak, and we want to start a new parak tomorrow. And it's going to go, it's going to look something like this, not that complicated, I have a lot of charts to explain it, it's very simple actually, but that's, that's the case. Okay, bal chayv, and an Isha Balas Chayv. It's a story of two, two, two people that, that bought two fields from the husband that are valued at the same price as the Ksuba. And the wife said to one of them, Ainli Dinu Dvar Mimah. We're going to see this case. Ask the Gemara. Vichi Kasvalei Mayhavi. This is an, another sugi we already had. We already, this is Chazara for us. When you say words like this, you say, Dinu Dvarim Eli Yimach. Dinu Dvarim Eli Yimach. That's not the proper Lashon. What's the proper Lashon? I'm giving it to you as a gift. Right? We had the sugi. I I remove myself from this field. I'm not going to deal with it. My hand is removed from it. Like, oh, my klum. You need the proper lashon. Whatever the lashon is. Says Gemara. We're familiar with this as well. If, in addition to the wording, there's also chalifin done, you know, you, you, like we do at a chasana, you raise, you raise a garment, three tfachim, you do kinyan chalifin. Those two things together combined, then it does work to say, Dinudvarim Ainli Asalazu. Okay. Ask the Gemara Vikonomi Yoda may have. We have another issue here. Tema Nachas Ruach Osisi Libali. A woman has the right to say, I wanted to please my husband. I lied. I don't want to give it, to, I don't want to sell it. I don't want him to sell it. But he looked at me, he said, I'm selling this. And she said, okay. And I, I think I mentioned this. I'm thinking about it. Maybe I shouldn't even say this, but I did that to my wife once. I sold a house in Chicago, a house she really liked a lot. I felt I needed to sell it. 
And uh, she didn't want to. And then she said, okay. And then after I sold it, she says, Nachasruach Asisi Libali. She's really upset. I think I'm she won't drive by that block. Maisa Shaya. Hurts her. I think I'm Well, it was the right thing to do. That's why we're in our Israel now. Da, 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 da. Okay, fine. No, but no, I'm saying, I, I know, but the have the women sometimes, under pressure, under the rest, they want to they wanna please their husband. She wasn't strong enough to say, no, we're not selling it. She said it once, twice. She saw it, it's not going to go in. Okay, fine, <laughs> sell it. My shayu. There is such a thing. Nachas ruach, asisi labali. It's interesting to me. I don't understand it completely. How could that undo a kinyan? It's like dvarm shabalei. There's different issues. But there is such a thing. That the wife. Now, what are we talking about? Not a regular, a husband has the right to sell his belongings. So Rashi says we're talking about one of three cases. Either Soim Barzel, where she's the real boss over there, she has a lot of bylaws, or he set aside a field and he said, this is, this is your field for the Ksuba, even though all the fields are. Rashi says that if you want to see, there's three types of field. He said specifically, Ksubasa, this is it. He said he wrote it in the Ksuba. Or it's Soim Barzel. Okay. The economy of the Mahavi, Temenachas Ruchas is the Bali, Milot. Now we learned in the Mishnah. Lokach Mino Ish. The Chazer Lokach Mino Isha. So a guy goes and buys a property from the man. And then just to make sure he goes and gets consent and he, he, he signs off the wife for the same whatever. He bought a house and the, the, he sees the wife is not so happy. She so says, You know what? You sign over here on the dotted line that you're selling it. Mechoy Bottle. It's not a good Mechiro. Again, we're talking about the, one of these special cases of he already designated to the Ksuba specifically this house, this field. Alma, you see this idea. Okay. The woman has the right to say, I was almost mentally forced to sign there just to please my husband. I didn't really mean to sell it. Um, coerced. Coerced. Ha, Rabbi Meir, our Mishnah is Rabbi Meir. Ha, Rabbi Yehuda, over there in Gitin is Rabbi Yehuda. The Sanya. Kasev Larisha, Veloy Chasmalai. A case where it's an interesting case. Do we say, I try to please my husband, where she's proven that she doesn't care about her husband that much? She's not so scared of him because he sold two properties. On the first one, she didn't sign off. And on the second one, she did sign off. Now, she. Could she say, well, I was trying to please my husband. Well, if you're trying to please your husband, how come you didn't do it yesterday when he sold the first property? Because you really liked it and she didn't want to. Okay, yeah. I hear the same property. Identically, we're talking about fields, not so much. Real, I'm just throwing in real estate because that's what we understand. But the fields, here, this, uh, the, this, this two acres and that's two acres. Well, yesterday, you didn't care. When he came to you, he said, let's sell the field. He said, okay, fine. Yeah, which one? Because of the she signed on the second one. If the ksuba so the mayor, she loses the ksuba completely. Why? Because she can't go to the first guy. Because when the first guy bought his field, there's a second field available. She can't go to the second field because she signed off on it. So she has zero. So, you see, Rabbi Yudah holds of this idea of Nachas Ruach Asis I try to please my husband. Atem Malachem Eli, what do you want from me? So, most learn that this is a question. There's a question mark in this coming line. Although, some say that maybe it's not such a, it's just a statement, but I think it's more of a question. That, that's how the simple reading here is. Rabbi, Sassam Lahacha Kere Meir, Vesassam Lahasam Kere Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi, who wrote the Mishnayis, he would, our Mishnah, just write an anonymous Mishnah that goes like Ramey and over there, an anonymous Mishnah that goes like Yehuda and con- contradict himself. Omer Papa Begrusha Vedivyakal. Obviously, a divorced woman, not only does she want, she doesn't, most divorced women don't care about their husbands, their exes. They want to harm their exes, maybe. They don't want to please their exes. So there's no svar over here of pleasing. Ravashi Omar, we're not talking about a divorced woman, says Ravashi. Kula Ramey here. You can be mechalik. When you talk about two people, 
why the different attitude? Why, for one, do you want to please your husband? And the first client, the first buyer, you, you didn't want to please your husband. Well, what happened there? Obviously, so you, you don't care about your husband. You don't want to please him. But when it comes to one client, so Rebbe Meir admits that now, in our Mishnah, the cause of Leila Acher, you asked me a question, why can't she come and claim Nachas Ruch Aziz That was the, the Gemara's first question. What, how do we trust her when she says, yeah, go ahead, take it. I don't care about it. But Nachas Ruch Aziz You can't trust the woman. Maybe deep down she didn't want to sell it. The answer is because our Mishnah is talking about a case that he already tried it once. And she was okay with it. So she already lost her Nachas Ruch Aziz so how come it doesn't mention in the Mishnah? The Mishnah is not talking about it. We're not concerned about what the case is. You're asking me a side question about Nachas Ruach Aziz al It has nothing to do with our Mishnah, really. I'm just telling you, we're talking about our Mishnah is a case where there is no Nachas Ruach Aziz al Why? Because she's already... We have experience with this woman. There's other cases where she didn't care about her husband. She wasn't trying to do Nachas Ruach. Okay. It's already, this is the second time around, so we already know she's not trying to do Nachas Ruach al but there is a concept, in general, there's a concept of Nachas Ruach Aziz Lubayli, if it, this is her first time, and she claims that she only did it because she wanted to please her husband, then we trust her. But in our Mishnah, this is the second time. It's not awesome. Once we're talking about Masech Zgitin, and we brought that Brisa, so, so let's go into it a little bit. Ein nifroim minachasim in Mishwabadim. The Malva cannot come. A guy lends money, so he can't come and grab minachasim Yeshua Badim. If the 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 loiva sold off property, and the malva wants to to collect, if the loiva has a field. Now we're talking about idis beinus ziburis. He has a house in Yerushalayim. He has a house in Brooklyn, and he has a house in Iowa. He sold the house in Yerushalayim, in Brooklyn. He, has, he still has a house in Iowa. So the guy, the Malva, can't go and say, well, I want the house in Yerushalayim. It's I want the house in Yerushalayim. No, it's already sold. Yeah, but typically if, if you sell something and you owe money, the, the Malva can go after it. Only in a case where he has nothing else. But since he has a house available, yes, it's in Iowa. You have to go to Iowa. Vafilo in Ziburus, even if the house is a terrible house, terrible field. Ibailu. Ishtadu b'nei chori, ma'u delitru v'mishabdi. What if that house or that field got ruined? Could he has a ruined field versus a beautiful place in Yerushalayim? What's the halacha? Does he, is he forced to go? To the room field. Toshma. Lachar you can prove it. Kos of Larisha v'le chasmaloi. Lasheni v'le chasmaloi. If in a case where the husband sold two properties. To the first guy, she didn't please the husband. She didn't want to sign off on it. To the second guy, she went ahead and she signed off. Idu ksuba. So the real mayor, she doesn't have ksuba. Again, why? Because from the first guy, the first guy, she he has the, the second property. The second property she already signed off on. Off on. So she doesn't have the second property. Kids or she doesn't have anything. Do remain. And if you're gonna tell me that when it gets ruined, you could come and grab from something that's already Meshubad. Nihi the Ibdik Mashani. Yes, she lost the Ksuba from the second Marisha Mia Tigbi. Now this is a Pelotika thing, to me at least. And this is what the Gemara is going to say later. I don't understand the Havimini so well. She herself said, I'm not going to come after you. So, let's see. Says the Gemara, Marisha, you think we let her go and collect from the first one. Omer of Nachman, Yitzchak, my Ibda, Ibda Mashani, Enchanan. Says Rav Nachman, what does it mean, the Lashen? Ibda, she lost? No, she didn't lose completely. She just can't go to the second guy. Um, 
Okay. Says the Gemara, Ibn Mishnah, Omar Rava, Shtik Shubhuz Bidava. First of all, I don't like what you're saying, says, says Rava to his Rebbe, Rim Nachman. Choda, the Ibda, the Gary Mashman. The word Ibda means she lost. She completely lost out, not half from one person. Vay, Tanya, love him in Echodomach and Echazav Shnaim. A guy borrowed money. And then the guy that borrowed the money sold his property because of Balchoyv Lilikeach, Shani. Dinudvarm in the Imach. And the Malva says to the guy, I have, I am not going to come after you. Eloi al lekeach rishon klum. He can't come after him. Let's see what we have there. No, that's li- later. Okay. Leave that on. You can take it off the screen until we get there. Eloi al lekeach rishon klum. Again, a guy borrowed money. And then he went and he sold two of his properties off to two people. And, he, and then the, the Malva says, the Malva, the lender says, I'm not going to come after the first guy that bought a property. So, you could go to the second guy. So, by us also, by the woman too. Says Gemara, Hasam iu the afsin of Shebi Yodayim. Over there, when he says, he says, Dinu dvar mainly imach. So he lost it himself. He himself said, I have nothing to do with it. I'm, I don't want, I'm, not, I'm never going to come after you. So if he never, if he said that himself, so you can't say, uh, it's, it's a case where the, the field got ruined. He ruined it for himself. He said, I don't want, I, I don't want you to come after me. I'm not going to come after you. Only Rav Yemil or Vashi. Vaha. This might, we don't do spots in the middle of a line. From here on out. Yeah, you're usually, okay, whatever. Yeah. Your son is here today, by the way. It's a big, big schos. He's out for Yavamas, comes in the middle of the tzubas. You know why he's here? Because I met him last night and I said, no, you got to come back to the daf. He said, I'll be there tomorrow. That's what he told me. And he's here today. Unbelievable. Rabbi says, seriously, you should tell, tell your friends. And if you're watching this, Sukkot is the time that people fall off the daf, like every yanta, because especially if you're in America, you have two days. You're not going to be watching Shir. So first of all, try to learn it yourself. Second of all, if you don't, what do you do, Mati? You jump ahead. Thank you. Very good. You don't watch on Yantif? No, you shouldn't watch on Yantif. <laughs> Says Gemara, There's stories every day that Yanim say that if the. You're cold? Yeah, you want mine? <laughs> <laughs> I actually forgot about them. You know what? Because he said that, I'm not doing them. Finish. <laughs> The Dayan says that when the, uh, the field gets ruined, they go after a field that's Meshubat. You, you go after the house in Yerushalay. The field is ruined. We go after the sponsor in honor of my uncle Rebbe Chana Pressman as a schos, a year filled with Mazel Brachan Aslacha. Second sponsor as a schos to continue being able to support Torah and to finish shots with the rebelli. Why? Prove it to you. The Agavra, Maisa, Rabbi says it's a Maisa. Where was it that we had great mices? I think it was like Erevin. Misa, the guy, lived next to the other guy, and he didn't put an Erev. And that was the end of the story. It's like, oh. Finally, there's a story. There's a person who owed money. So he says, you know what? Here, take my vineyard, and you'll eat the produce. You'll eat the grapes for 10 years. Once you're done eating for 10 years, I don't owe you anything. The cash... After five years, I looked it up. It says that vin- vi- vineyards, they, they last for like 30 years. They have, they have an expiration. They only produce good grapes for 10 years, whatever it is. It's not like they last forever. It's not some, uh, there's a one that, that's 400 years old. But Bedar Klal lasts for 30 years. And then what do you do? The actual, the bottom... Uh, Okay, I don't understand these things, but it seems like there's an expiration here. That after five years, he was getting grapes, 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 five years, then it all stopped. It went downhill. 
So this is a case of Ishtatfu that it, it got it ruined. The vineyard, something happened to it, got ruined. And Chachamim said, take from Meshubadim, go get, get the guy's house. Ah, he has here a bad field. I don't want the bad field. I want to go after the Meshubad. Says the Gemara, Hosam Nami, Inu Sidu Anafshayu. The guy made the loss himself. Kivin the Haviyadi the Pardeso over the Kish. The guy that bought from the Loiva a field, the house in Yerushalayim somewhere, that guy, he should have known that there's a, there's a vineyard somewhere that, that's to, that went to a Balchai, and that eventually it's going to expire, and they're going to come after his house. So when he bought it, he should have known better, and therefore he himself lost it for himself. He shouldn't have bought it. If what you have, what you're about to go after, the field you're about to go after, is ruined, you can go after sold fields, houses, real estate that the guy already sold, even though he has an available field, but it's a ruined field, go after the good real estate. Omar Abay. Nechasi lich. A guy says, I'm going to give you, he talk, he's, t- he's talking to an unmarried woman, here, like an uncle. I want you to benefit from me, I have all these l'chassim, here, take, take all this real estate. However, we're going to be calling this guy achrayich. After your meyav esrim, I want whatever I'm giving you to go to another person. Now, the question really is, what kind of ownership does she have? Does she only own the produce or she owns the whole thing? If she owns the whole thing, perhaps she could go sell it to somebody. Even though there's a stipulation that after she dies, it should go to somebody else. So, the Omda Venises, and she gets married. <laughs> Says the Gemara Yisoid, Baal Lekei A husband, in all her belongings, is like a purchaser. He bought... This Yerusha that she got from this guy, she bought it from him. Since the husband bought it, she has the right to sell it. And if she has the right to sell it, she sold it to her own husband. And therefore, it doesn't go after she dies to the Acharayich guy, to the second guy. Because it's actually here it is. He says, first I'll go to you, and afterwards I'll go to another person. If the first one sells, the second one could take it away from the buyer. Why? Because he holds that what he, he only had, this, the, this woman only had pay raise. She didn't own the actual thing. The second guy gets zero because the first person has the right to sell it. Says the Gemara, How could that be? You're telling me Abai says this. There's a Mishnah in Saita that says, talks about a site of blowing up, a whole thing, and uh, the, you see, you start seeing that her veins start t- turning colors, her face, you got to get her out of there quickly so there's no dead body in the Beis Hamikdash. And then it says in the bottom of the Mishnah over there, it says, Ezu Rasha Arum, who's a conniving Rasha? Zamesi Eitza Limkar bin Achasim Kirbshim Gamliel. There's a person who gives advice. You have Rabbi Shimon Gamliel holds that there's a guy that's dying. He wants a certain thing to happen to his nechassim. He wants at first to go to this woman. And after she dies, he wants to go to another nephew. So what's the Eitzah that Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says? Well, if she sees that she's about to die, she could go ahead and sell it. She takes all the money. And the other nephew gets zero. Well, that's a really not nice thing to do. It works halachically. But that's not what the dead guy wanted. The guy that's dying wanted his other nephew to also benefit from it. He didn't want it to just to stay in her family. So if you do that, you're a terrible person. You mechala the world. Mevala the world. Mechala the world. 
So, but this is Abayah saying it. Abayah says he's a terrible human being. So if Abayah says he's a terrible human being, how is it possible Abayah says that it works? By him, by Abayah announcing in Yeshiva and says this, this is that this halacha works, he's basically telling everybody to do it. It's a great idea. If you're the woman, go ahead and sell it. That's, isn't that what's happening? Huh? Yeah. Um, no, Abayi says that it works. In other words, it works. But if it works, he got up and said it works. If he says that it works, that means that this this drush he just gave. I'm giving it to, to the woman, and after the woman, I'm giving it to my nephew. He says, but if she goes ahead and she sells it, then the nephew gets nothing. So the, in other words, he's encouraging it. How can you encourage something that you're a big Russia if you do? Says the Gemara, he didn't say she should do it. By her getting married, the husband is a buyer. It's a great idea. But he didn't, he didn't encourage her to get married. He said, after the fact, if she get married, it goes to the husband. He wasn't encouraging it. So here's the case. Finally, we get to this chart. I'm giving you the, the field. After... The field, after you, goes the Mr. Achrayich. So on this chart, Achrayich is, is the guy in the, in the hat. You can barely see the hat because it's in black. The guy, it says by him, Achrayich, he's by the black arrow. So it starts from the top. You have a couple. First, the uncle, the, the, the wealthy uncle from America gives them, gives her a field. She goes, she's married, so her husband takes it. Husband's a little cool. Then she goes and sells it to some guy. Comes the husband in the orange, and he says, or the orange, orange. He says, what are you talking about? I'm here before you. I'm also like her. I'm also a purchaser. I bought it from my wife when I got married or when I was with my wife. I'm the purchaser. So I'm taking it away from you. I'm purchaser number one. But the Achrayich guy, because in the stipulation, when the, the, the wealthy uncle gave the woman, the five-towner, the field or the house, he said, but after you goes Mr. Achrayich. So the Achrayich is, is better, is in a better position than the husband. So the Achrayich takes it away from the husband. Then comes the purchaser and takes it away from Achrayich. Because it was sold to him. In this case, the Baal doesn't take it anymore. Oh, why? A guy stipulates, here's a, field, here's a house, here's real estate, and I want it after you die, I want it to go to my nephew, to another guy, Mr. Achrayich, the guy with the beard. But she sold it to the plumber, and then she died. The husband, who's the first purchaser, because being married to a woman, you actually buy everything off her. It's like as if you bought it from her. So he's the first purchaser. He goes and takes it away from the plumber. But then, and Mr. Achrayich takes it away from the husband. And then the purchaser takes it away from Achrayich. Why? Because he bought it off the, the wife. And she has a right to sell it. And then it stops, top of the, the le- top left, the plumber gets it. Finally, at the end of the day, the plumber gets it. Now, as the Gemara, why is it different than our Mishnah where it goes around in a circle? Let the husband, look, if you look at the chart, after the plumber buys it, the husband takes it away from the plumber. So now in the purple where the plumber has it, let the husband take it from the plumber. And then let the achrayach take it away from the husband, and it should go in a big circle. Why did it stop at the plumber? Says the Gemara. 
Hosom, Achi has a pshar They have to do. A, they have to make a deal between themselves. Hosom is lu pseidel kulu. In the Mishnah, when you have two women, each one deserves a ksuba. So there's a loss if the if one of the women doesn't get it. Also, the the keach, the guy that purchased it, bought it. He paid money. He also wants it. So there's a there's a loss over here. Over here, the husband didn't buy anything. He doesn't really deserve it. He's, he's not having, he's not incurring a loss. And the Mr. Achraich also doesn't have a loss because he didn't pay for it. The only person in this case, in all these arrows, that has a loss is the plumber. He actually paid for it. He's, he stands to lose money here. But since, well, we have to say another shtick here. But since, Mr. Achraich is in the picture. Once Achraich takes it, that's it. It's over. Achraich has the right to take it from the husband. And once he intervenes, he stops the circle. That's what Rashi says. There's like two things going on here. First of all, he incurs a loss. The Lekach incurs a loss. But Achraich cuts off the husband. Says the Gemara. Also, Rav from Ramah Shemaita Kamei the Ravashi. Rafim said it over the Rashi. Miyomar Abay Hachi, Vomar Abay Nachasi Licha Achraich Leplani. If the uncle says, I'm going to give you some real estate, and after you, afterwards it goes to Mr. Achraich. Om the Veni says, if she gets married, Baal Ikea Chavi, then by her getting married, the husband turns into a purchaser. Vein La Achraich Vemakim Baal Klum, the Achraich cannot take it away from the husband. Om Alei, no, there's a difference. Hasan Om Alei, Kshi Pnuya. The first case was when she wasn't married yet. So when she gets married, there's a purchaser. Over here, our case, you see? They're already married when she got the field. So she already got the, the field when she was married. So then the guy giving it, the uncle giving it, knows that she's married. And he said, even though you're married, I wanted to go to Achrayich. That means he doesn't care about the husband. He doesn't want it to go to the husband. He said specifically, he shouldn't go. My Carmela. Achrayich likni, ba'aloi likni. Our boys said we have to do this. There's a bunch of charts here, but let's just do it quickly. It's 801, we'll do it in two, three minutes. Nechem ba'al choiv. What's going on in the Mishnah? There's a story of a circle in the Mishnah. Tana, v'chem ba'al choiv u'shnei l'ku choiz. V'chem isha ba'al choiv u'shnei l'ku choiz. Hajan alach mishoy yonasoy. Hajan alach mishoy, don't get up yet. I gotta show you this story. It's, a, it's an interesting story. Hajan alach mishoy yonasoy. Here it goes. There are two people, a malv and a loiva. They're, they're not related, let's say. So you want to see this rabbi agreement. The Shimon borrowed a hundred dollars from Reuven. Okay, step one. Step two is Shimon had two houses, two fields. Each one was worth half of the loan and he sold them off to the plumber and the dentist. Mochash, they saw they just wrote on the side what it is. Okay, we call them one and two, Mr. One and Two. Now, Reuven... The Malva, who's owed the money, tells number two, the plumber, Dinu Dvarim Enli Imach. We recall that from the Mishnah. That's why the Mishnah then says, V'chein. Another case. So basically, the Malva is never going to go after the plumber. But you know who could go after the plumber? One. Because one was owed money before two. He's one, he's in the first position. Two is in the second position. So, check out what happens. Again, the Leiva owes Ruvain $100. Now, Ruvain, top right corner, wants his money back. He's going to go after a house. He can't go after the plumber's house because he said, I'm not going to go after you. Who could he go after? The dentist. So, he takes his house. Now, the dentist doesn't have a house. Who does the dentist go after? Shimon. He takes his house. Now, the Malva could take the dentist's house again. Because the Malva could go after the dentist. He's owed 100, not 50. He got one house that's worth 50. He goes after the dentist. Now he has two houses. But what happens is, he said to, the, to, to, to what he called, the, the, the plumber was told by the Malva, I'm not going to go after you. And the plumber lost his house. So he grabs a house from Reuben the Malva. And guess what? 
the dentist lost his house. So now the dentist takes it away from the plumber and just goes around in a big circle. And now you have to make him sure. That's what, that's what the mission is saying. Yeah? Again? And then we have one more case. It's the same exact case, Rabbi Yisai, just a woman and the husband. Instead of a loiva and a malva, we have a, a husband that owes a hundred to the wife and then the husband sold the two houses and the wife said to the plumber, Dvarim Eli Imach, have a wonderful day. Matze Yantif. Nine o'clock, Matze Yantif, right over here. If the dentist 